Hi, my name is Jillis, and in the next 20 minutes, we'll build a guestbook application using SvelteKit and deploy it on Cloudflare workers all across the globe. We'll store the guestbook messages into D1 using Drizzle as our ORM. It's gonna be a lot of fun, and let's just dive in. So we'll start by creating a new Cloudflare worker project, like saying npm pmpm create Cloudflare latest. This is the create Cloudflare CLI and it just helps us bootstrapping a worker. And we'll call this a Svelte Git Guestbook. It will use a framework and the framework will of course be Svelte Git. We'll use a minimal template, we'll use TypeScript. We're only gonna use Drizzle to keep it simple. SQLite and LibSQL for now, PMPM. So this will bootstrap the initial Svelte application and then the Cloudflare CLI follows up with um, some customization. That's Wrangler, it adds the Cloudflare adapter and updates back to JSON. We use Git and we won't deploy that. Okay, so we have this Svelte Guestbook app now. Let's open it up. And let's start with package.json. A couple of scripts that we'll be using. Uh, database, migrations, dev, build, and uh, deploy. The CF type gen, which will create our TypeScript types based on whatever we have in Wrangler. I'll get to that in a sec. And you'll see we have two adapters right now. The default one and Cloudflare. We'll say pmpm remove spell JS adapter auto. We don't need that one. Done. All right. So this looks good. Let's see how it looks if we do pmpm dev. Run it right here and welcome to Svelte Git. Cool. Let's see if we can preview it. pmpm run preview. This will be in a mini flare environment. So it kind of looks like what you would have when you deployed your production. Um, we got a warning here. We'll fix that in a second, but first let's see if it works. Great, it works. Now this warning says, hey, the package node async hooks wasn't found in the file system, but it's built into node. That's because SvelteKit uses async hooks. So all we need to do is tell the worker environment, like, hey, we're gonna need node compatibility. And we can do so by opening wrangler.jsonc, and we have a compatibility date, and we just need to say, also have some compatibility flags, node.js compatibility. That's all. Now if we do preview again, we shouldn't be getting any warnings. Okay. Well, now that we have done a preview, let's, let's do a deploy. This will actually create the worker. And in a couple minutes, we've deployed a worker and a Svelte application. Now granted, it doesn't do anything, but it's, it's out there right now. Uh, it will give us this URL, Svelte Kit Guestbook. Let's open it up. There we go. You can visit uh, this URL and you'll see this application. Um, as a verified in the CLI, we'll go to workers, compute, Svelte Kit Guestbook. Beautiful. And you'll see them on the free plan. You know, we get 100,000 requests a day, all for free. This is why I'm such a big fan of Cloudflare. You can do so much for free. Um, but yeah, let's, let's go on. So we have deployed our worker and it does nothing, but it is out there. So let's go to the next part and add D1. Well, first we'll see if we can actually read and write from SQLite locally, and then we'll get it to work with Cloudflare. So when we chose Drizzle earlier in the video, it created this Drizzle config for us, and it points us to a schema. Let's open up that schema. And by default, it has a user ID and an H. For our guest book, we're gonna have a little different table. Nothing crazy, but we will have a bit more complex table right here. So we just have guestbook messages, they have an ID, a name, the message, where it's from, and when it was created, right? So we have this as our uh, table, and now we need to create our migrations. So if I go back to drizzle config, we need to set a migration folder. Uh, we do so by saying out, src lib server db migrations thank you so great now remember our uh, schema if we say 
if we go to our pmpm run db generate, this will generate the SQL based on our schema, right? So we have a SQL migration file. Let's open it up real quick to see. SQL, right, it created it as our SQL for the table. So let's migrate now. pmpm run db migrate. And this will have applied those migrations to a local DB. So the local DB is here, env, right? File, local DB. This was created by the Svelte Kit bootstrap before the Cloudflare CLI even ran, because uh, we select Drizzle. So let's see if it actually works. SQLite 3 local DB. What tables do we have? Right, Drizzle migrations and guestbook. Cool, so that works. And now let's see if we can um, add some Svelte code to read from this database and write to this database. We'll start by creating a server action. Um, so inside of routes, we have our, our page here and we need a way to load data. And we also need a, a form endpoint basically so that we can write data. And we'll do so by saying page.server.ts. And whatever we write in here will only be run on the server. Um, I'm gonna copy the code because it will save us some time, but we'll go over it. So there's page server load, um, the load function, and we'll just select the messages from guestbook messages, limit 10 and order by descending. And then our form action will have um, the request and platform, which is what we get from Cloudflare. We have a bunch of cool stuff like the CF country, um, where this came from according to the worker and we'll insert this into our database. Now you see some errors here. The only reason why is that because we're not running the dev server. When you run the dev server, um, let's just do that real quick. We'll say pmpm run dev. It will also, it will regenerate those uh, uh, types. So now if I open it back up and I go to this server, right, we get no more errors. Cool. So we have the server function or the, the load function. Now we just need to update the component because currently the component just says like, welcome to Svelte Kit. Um, let's start with the script tag and paste it in two. And all it does is we get the data from the page drops. It will know this is messages, right? Because it's right here, messages. And we have some local state, name, message, and the character count. This is a derived rune. Now with this, we wanna loop over all the messages and display them. So we'll go here, create a loop. And for each of the messages, display this div with message, name, um, the message itself, when it was posted. And if it's empty, we'll say no messages yet. And then finally, of course, we need the form. I uh, will do that right here. Form at the post, takes a name, uh, the message how many characters, and if there's fewer than five, then we disable the submit button. And let's add a, let's add a horizontal rule here. Um, actually, it's not React, there we go. So now, pmpm run dev, we should have a um, working guest book, but it's just local, of course. We'll say ELS, hello, at least five characters, right, that works too, and post. Awesome. So it pre-filled this US. Um, this is normally comes from the Cloudflare worker, but because we're running it locally, you might wonder, well, where does, where does it come from? Well, this comes from the worker SDK and has this fallback. Uh, that was kind of puzzling to me because I am actually in Austin. And I was like, how does it know I'm in Austin when I'm offline? But this is why. Um, great. So we have this working locally. Let's see if we can deploy this, right? So the best way to do that first is to do a preview, run preview. So builds pretty fast, looks good. Let's press B to open it in the browser and we get a 500 error. Why is this? Well, it says URL scheme not supported. And basically we have this file, right? That we've been using, but in the work environment, there's, you don't have access to this file. You can either pass it a libsql URL or a URL to any other uh, file that is supported, but 
we are using Cloudflare D1, which is something different. So we'll need to create a database and then bind that database to our worker. So let's start by creating the database. Wrangler D1 create guestbook DB. Wrangler is the what we use to interact with our worker. So we'll create a D1 database. And it successfully created a, a database for us. And here we have the binding. Now we're gonna copy this because this is important. Um, this is our D1 database. We currently have only one database and the binding is DB. This binding is what you'll access on the environment in your Svelte application, right? So you say platform.env.db. If this was, if you had four databases, then you might have binding DB4. Um, this is pretty important to know. So we created our database and we need to make us, we add, need to add to Wrangler and we need to make a small modification and also add the migrations folder. So we have bindings here and we're gonna paste this. It's gonna say, hey, this doesn't work because we're missing a comma. So we'll add this here. And one thing we need to add is saying migrations directory, right? The directory of the migrations, which we said earlier, which will be source lib uh, db migrations. Actually source lib server db migrations server okay so now that we have this we can run the migrations against this wrangler against this d1 database so we say wrangler d1 migrations apply against the guest db yes okay let's apply this and you can see here it says hey to execute this on your remote database at the remote flag so currently this did not create it on our um, worker environment or in our Cloudflare environment. This is just local using Miniflare. So next, since we added a binding, we want to have to run, we want to run this CF type gen utility. And what it does, it will create new uh, Cloudflare types, new TypeScript types based on your Cloudflare environment. So since we have DB here, it says, hey, D1 database. And we'll use this in our Svelte kit application. So. Let's go here and open up our DB index. So this is not gonna work in the Cloudflare environment because you can just say database URL and then point it to a worker, uh, sorry, to a database. We actually have to use the binding that will be provided by Cloudflare. So by the Cloudflare uh, worker runtime to be specific. So let's, let's update this and I'm gonna paste it in and just go over it real quick. We import two drizzles we from libsql for the local sqlite file and the d1 adapter and then we say hey in this get db function if you pass me a d1 database then return me that and if you pass database url then use libsql and otherwise just throw an error and then we'll say okay drizzle client will be whatever return of this get db and this will be important in a second um because we have to update our database calls right so we have this page server and it calls db but now we have get db and instead of doing get db in every single uh, view we want to use svelte's uh, locals and the locals will define in a hooks um, file so say hooks.server.ts yep and in here it's gonna be a very simple function. We have a handle function. And the handle function will run on every request. So you just say handle, and it takes the event uh, and a resolve function. You say, okay, locals.db equals get db. But now it's like, hey, well, well, what is this db? Like, I don't know what, what you have on locals. So that's why we're gonna go to our uh, app.ts. I'm gonna say, okay, you also have locals and you will have a DB, which is a drizzle client. And then we need to import the type drizzle client. Oh, not from drizzle ORM, from libserver.db. Okay, now this is cool. Now we go back here and say, okay, I, I know what this DB thing is. Cool. 
All right, so let's run this. Um, oh, I didn't save the hooks. Save this. Okay, so let's run this in our preview deployment. PM run preview. We get an error. Oh, because we still use this DB call in page.server. Right, so let's open up the server. And, oh, not in the hooks, but in the lib. Um, this one, all right, yeah. So in the page server where we actually make the query, we're now gonna just get rid of this and we're gonna say, okay, give me the locals and then we'll use local.db. And then here we do the same, locals. And we say locals.db. So now we can preview. Great. Press B to open a browser. Awesome. So, preview environment. Name. My name is Yilis and Cloudflare workers. Workers rock. Great. So, this works. And what's nice is we know that it works in a preview environment. We can be pretty sure it's going to work in a production environment too. Um, there's one thing left to do though before we deploy which is we need to apply those migrations to the remote database as well. So remember earlier we did Wrangler, D1, migration apply, just to pass the remote. So it's gonna apply the migrations to our remote D1 database, for sure, do it. And now we can say PM run deploy. And once that's done, we have a working Cloudflare worker in production available on the public internet that anyone can access and anyone can write in the guest book. So like, hello. Great. That's it. Um, of course, this code is available on GitHub. I have a uh, repo here, Cloudflare workers felt guest book, and it will have all this code that we just wrote and yeah, I hope you uh, find this useful and fun. I think it's really fun. And in the next video, we're gonna make this even cooler by adding authentication, email notifications. It's gonna be crazy. But yeah, see you later.